you mentioned in an interview that teams are starting to guard you a little differently now, right? A little more face guarding, probably adding a little more physicality um, and denying you the ball. Obviously, you're the head of the snake. To, so trying to get the ball out of your hands is probably the like game plan going into that night, right? So like, what are some of the strangest coverages that you've seen up until the season so far? Yeah, there's been some interesting stuff. Um, I would say up until like – up until like the Lakers game in the tournament, everybody was kind of guarding me the same way. Like everybody was mainly in a, you know, up to touch or at, or dropping, uh, like semi denied, but not really. I'm mean, just knowing that I'm kind of the focal point. And then after, mm-hmm. after the Laker game, then everybody started to blitz all my ball screens. Um, and that took a little bit of an adjustment, but I feel like I figured that out, like understanding getting off the ball early, playing more through pitches than having to come off ball screens every time. And, like becoming a screener myself, I've never, I've never set screens. So like me trying to understand like how I can be better <laughs> there too. Uh, yeah. But I, I think now it's interesting because like it's just adjusted so much and I'm just seeing so much different coverages because now I feel like teams won't blitz me anymore because I feel like I've like figured it out where it's a lot more like traditionally teams have put like taller, longer dudes on me to like bother my jumper and stuff like that. I feel like it's adjusting a little bit more to put in like a quicker, a quicker, like more endurance guy to pick me up full court. So like sometimes when I'm tired, I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to bring this up, like take it up. You know what I mean? And then the minute I give it right. up, it's like a full, de- it's a full <laughs> denial, like kind of like they're, on, they're playing on my top side, sending everything down. And then that's when I really have to become a screener. I think that part of my struggles have been, I've just been, conceding to these de- denials like so easily and then mm-hmm. kind of like you know you see there's some players in the league who do it when they're getting denied they're just like y'all do it like y'all take care of mm-hmm. it four on four you know like i mm-hmm. i've kind of had to get back to like chasing the ball a little bit but like mm-hmm. in an unselfish way if that makes sense like because mm-hmm. when you hear chasing the ball you just think like somebody's going gee they're not passing like no, no, I'm trying to chase the ball to kind of put teams in different, you know, uh, coverages. Then we can get to our action and stuff like that. So that's kind of been the mm-hmm. biggest adjustment for me is like just kind of learning how to play off the ball a little bit more. Like when I played with with Fox, like I didn't necessarily play off the ball. Like it wasn't like sets were being run for me off the ball. I was just spotting up off the ball. But it wasn't like I had to like come off pin downs and screen for somebody to, you know, like it's it's a complete completely different, especially without Buddy and uh, me having to adjust to that role. So it's been really interesting uh, to kind of like learn more about myself and like change, change my workouts a little bit more. I feel like for mm-hmm. the majority of the year, my workouts have just been pick and roll, handling an ISO, you know, getting to my, getting the shots. And now it's like, I'm like setting screens, working on pin down shooting. Like I've never done that before. So that that's kind of been the interesting part with the, with our new group. Right. Essentially you letting the, the defense off the hook by not going and get the ball is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, cause when you think like chase the ball, I'm like, well, I don't want to get in guys way, but there's like different ways for me to like chase the ball to get downhill. Like if you're chasing the ball to reset, then we're slowing down and that's where we're not at our best. But if I'm chasing the ball by setting, by setting like cross screens and like uh, setting screens for Pascal when he has the ball and different stuff like that, we get better stuff. Like it's like so interesting. I was talking to somebody about this, like, the minute that I started, you would think like by being super unselfish. So by me not bringing it up all the time that like my assists would go like up, but mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like completely the other way. Like by me being so unselfish to be like, y'all handle it four on four, just every points, assists, everything goes down. Like it, it all mm-hmm. goes down because I don't have the ball. You know what I mean? So that's kind of been the interesting part. It's like counterintuitive a little bit, but you know, figuring it out. Got you. I, I do want to ask because you're such a dual threat with playmaking and scoring. When it, when the game is going, like at what point does one click in more than the other? Like is it teams? Is it schemes? Is it feel? Is it it's time? Like at what point is it like, all right, Reese, you got to be a scorer right now? Yeah, I think uh, like I, during the flow of the game, right, I don't necessarily think about that. I'm just like thinking how do I make the right basketball play right now? You know, it, mm-hmm. it feels like I've been on a – this is what it's been all year for me. Going to halftime, I'm two for six. I got ten assists, and we're down five. And then they come up to me, and they show me the stat sheet, and they're like six shots, 
this isn't enough. And then I go in the third quarter and I shoot, I shoot, shoot, shoot. And then like it balances out, you know, like, cause I'm like, I gotta be more aggressive. So like, I would say like, mm-hmm. if I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like if you look at my numbers, a third and the fourth would be where I get the majority of my points. And I've been trying to like find a way to adjust that mentality. And because like, I remember Tyrese Maxey said it to me uh, last season, like I went into halftime with like 10 assists, probably like five points and we're coming out of halftime and I'm wiping off my shoes and Tyrese comes and guards me full court. And he's like, all right, time to play defense now. Like you're actually going to score. And I'm like, people actually think that about me. Like I didn't, I didn't <laughs> I know that I did that. He was the first person to point it out to me. And uh, yeah. I think it's, it's not on purpose. It's just the flow of the game and trying to find the right way to like, I think every game is a battle of those, of those balances. I talk to like Sue Bird about it all the time because she's somebody who had to do it too. And there's not many people have to like do both and like, have like figured out how to do it both at a high level. And uh, so just trying to find the, the the right way between the two, because there's times, like I said, by me being too unselfish, it's like selfish to our team because now teams aren't guarding me the same way. Guys aren't getting the same looks. Like just trying to find that balance is always like, it's the, it's my biggest battle. It's a, it's a battle every game. Price picks not only makes daily fantasy easy, it makes using responsible gaming tools easy as well. You can set up alerts, limits, timeouts, and more in just a few clicks. When it comes to alerts, it lets you know when you have placed a certain amount of entries, and limits cap the number of entries or deposits you can make during a period of time. Lastly, timeouts are self exclusive allow you to take a break from prize picks for as long as you need prize picks wants their members to have easy access to the resources required to support their fantasy sports experience learn more at prizepicks.com slash responsible dash gaming or directly in prize picks first in class member support help center jackie you know what time it is Cha-ching! and make sure you do it responsibly 